here. What an honor to be with Carlos Alazraki and Jill Michelle Melian, who are the writers and co-stars, uh, but not director. You've got an, uh, an external director yep. uh, yes. for this new horror comedy, uh, wit Witness Infection. I keep wanting to say witless, and I realize no, no, no. That's, <laughs> Actually, that's, 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 that's pretty good. <laughs> but uh, anyway, a very fun mobster, uh, mobster zombie crossover. And so my first question to you both is, do you trust food trucks? <laughs> yeah, that's right, right? We actually were using a working food truck for uh, for the set, which we pasted on a uh, Tablione sign on. But yes, I, I, I do. I do trust food trucks. I think that I've eaten so much crap of, as my in my life as a stand-up comedian on the road and, and comedy club food. I think I'd be fine. <laughs> yeah, now they're all fancy, too, these food trucks. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. it's, it's another level. In our movie, though, not a fancy one. This is from the East Coast, and it has something in it that's very disgusting for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Don't trust that one. Don't trust that one. <laughs> nope. <laughs> okay. So what inspired you to, to write? I know you've worked together many times over the years, mm -hmm. and, and I think you've toured on uh, doing stand-up for, for yeah. year, a few years as well. I mean, what inspired you to write with this infection? Uh, you know, uh, again, we've talked about it quite a bit. Um, we both love zombie films. We love Shaun of the Dead. Uh, with Simon Pegg and Nick Frost. Uh, I love The Godfather. I love Sopranos. Jill loves The Sopranos. So I had a sort of a lump of clay in my head. And I said, I, I'd written, uh, I had read a couple of scripts that Jill had written and sent me to just kind of peruse. And I was like, wow, she's very good at structure and storytelling and, and dialogue. And boy, I need somebody like that because I'm an ideas guy. And then I was in her film, This Is Meg, and saw how quickly she put it together and helped with production. And I thought, let's write something together. And then that was my inspiration side of the story yeah and then with carlos i mean we toured together for so many years and then when we didn't tour anymore together i was by myself on the road and i was like i miss my brother and uh, <laughs> so when um when he initially came to me with this idea i was like yay another chance i get to work with my with my um like my my best friend and it was great because we have the same type of uh, sensibility when it comes to comedy and because our love for horror films it, we could really dive in because we love horror fans like that's like our huge it's a big reason why we even wrote this is because we just adore horror fans and their mm -hmm. dedication and their loyalty and it's just it, the world that they create and so we i was like i want to be a part of that and we just took this idea and ran with it and because we think very similar um, you know, it, there was no ego involved when writing. It wasn't like, well, I want this. And I went, it was just more like, -da -da -da. okay, we don't like that one. How about this? -da -da. And then we just find what rhythmically worked for both of us. And I, I hope that shined through because we had a lot of fun doing it. Yeah. No, definitely a lot of, of give and take. And I, I, I was going to ask because obviously you'd worked with many of these actors, mm -hmm. uh, both as voice actors and, and, and live action for, for years as well. You know, was there a lot of give and, uh, give and take improvisation in there as well? Oh, yeah. And even Rob Belushi, who none of us had worked with before. Rob, I met through a commercial acting improv workshop. He and Tim Stoltenberg taught it. And uh, originally, the part of Carlo was written for me. We thought that we might have difficulty casting somebody to play my father. I talked to Allison Bosch, who saw Rob grow up on the set of According to Jim and said, this guy Rob is a great actor. I go, what a coincidence. I just met Rob, and I saw his short film with Amy Carrero, where he plays a twisted serial killer type guy, and he's very good. Granted, very dramatic, you know, and we thought, how is he going to work with the rest of the crew, him being sort of the, the eye of the hurricane, and he just fit. But Jill I knew, Vince I knew, she knew Brett, she knew Monique, uh, Tammy Wartell. We knew uh, Robert Peters, who played uh, Mr. Georgeman. Um and we knew, uh, you know, uh, Brian Bottiglieri and Ben Begley, who are our hunters. And we knew Brian Orley was another guy, the guy that goes into the pool, goes into the water. We didn't know him, but uh, we just knew these people would gel together. But I was so surprised at how well Tara gelled with Aaron Hayes and how well Jill gelled with Rob and Vince, the three of them at the same time. Hmm. I so, know. right. I didn't know if Jill had anything to add. I took off, took off most of it, but uh. no, 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 no. Derek, go ahead. <laughs> okay, no, I, well, I, you know, I, I I've been to Temecula and Lake Elsinore, and so I want to know why that was the setting. I've only noticed wineries, so <laughs> you know, just curious. 
Um, I think uh, originally when we were when we had Andy Palmer um, as the director, um, uh, the script wasn't in Temecula. It was in Jersey. And Andy looked at us and went, yeah, we can't afford that. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. so we had to rethink it. And one of my best friends, which is also our set designer and co-producer, Greg Armstrong, lives in Marietta. And he is very connected out there and there's more land. Um, and we started looking around and I was, I was visiting and we visited our friend that owns the vineyard that we shot that big scene at. And I was like, oh my gosh, this location is amazing. And that spun the idea of maybe taking it into Temecula Lake Elsinore area. And then it expanded finding these incredible locations. And Andy found that awesome area in Lake Elsinore with the dog grooming and across the street, the beauty salon. And it just all fit together and we're pretty close, you know, just like a couple hour drive, but that was another hurdle because even though it's just like a couple hour mm -hmm. drive from Los Angeles, it put us in the zoning for SAG, for the Screen Actors Guild, that you guys are working out of town. And we we're like, mm -hmm. are you kidding? So mm -hmm. we got we got hit with all these, these fees mm -hmm. working mm -hmm. out of town, which, you know, in the end, it was still better yeah. than going to the Go to Oklahoma or some like some place like that. Yeah. 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 So we learned a lot. <laughs> yeah. We put people up. They had to stay there overnight, you know, and uh, it did, we learned a lot. We, we did it on the fly. We thank God we had uh, Andy Palmer and Philippe, his DP and, and a great crew, Jim Ojala doing all the makeup and his crew. We really needed everybody to be sacrificing a lot and be at their best and awake. Lots of Red Bulls, <laughs> lots of yeah. C4 powder, <laughs> everything to stay awake, but we did it, you know, we did it. All right. Um, so, I, and Jill, Jill Michelle, you have just made Forbes magazine. So uh, I'm going to focus on you for a moment. There, this is allowed a, a great focus and spotlight on on your career. How does it feel to be in Forbes? Uh, I still can't believe it. It is the coolest thing ever. And the in the most ironic part of it is that I had a Forbes magazine with all these women on the cover in this area where I do like my meditation for the longest time. And I was like, one day, one day. And even though I didn't make the cover, it's like I got this probably one of the most amazing write-ups I've ever received because it tracked me from a child and my inspiration of why I am who I am today and how that, that love for filmmaking and love for television and love for the stage, it transitioned into this world, which is completely different. As a kid, I thought I'm going to be a superstar, you know, and I'm like, I'm going to be like Joan Crawford and Betty Davis and blah. And here I am this comic and I'm making indie films and I'm producing now and writing and putting friends into it. It's like, but that spawned it, and the, that writer Jarrell, she really captured um, the the uh, the feeling I had of great. So hopefully, it'll inspire a lot of people. And, and to that end of, of, of the childhood dreams and so forth, I, I really think that this is a case of, especially in twenty twenty one, an opportunity to take your career into your hands, create your own yep. material. How important is that to you? To me, it's everything because um, like the Forbes article said, uh, it's like when diversity, when they were like the, this huge diversity push, you know, Carlos and I both thought like, oh, this is our time. We're like, we're going to be in everything. And we both, uh, you know, we kind of have that same thing where we're very, uh, I call it white Latina. He's white Latino. And, and what happens is they're like, you're, for me, it was like, you're not Latin enough. And it really hurt me um, in a sense of going like, Oh shoot. Okay. All right. But I had already been doing this and the momentum was going that it was almost like it gave me that extra armor where it's like, okay, then I'll just keep doing this and I'll just keep being awesome at this. And then I'll keep creating opportunities for other people that feel the same way I do that are so incredibly talented, but you, we don't check off all the boxes. Mm -hmm. And um, and so that inspires me now to just even be more active in creating um, our own content. Yeah, if we're if we're successful in one arena that it provides us with a budget to do some projects or film some sizzles and pitch things, that's what we're going to do. That's always been my mindset. I'm very fortunate to be uh, working in the voiceover uh, world 
pretty regularly when that, and that's nice. And then uh, Reno 911 has uh, come come to the fore again, and that's provided me with some uh, on camera screen time and also a little budget for films and stuff like. So if I have that, I still want to be creative. You still realize, like Jill said, you have to make your own path. And I've really, you know, you kudos to like Jason Sudeikis and um, and also uh, Zach Galifianakis, you know, two Greek guys who would not be cast as Greek people, but they're like, no, they're going to blaze their own path. They're going to do SNL. They're going to do baskets. They're going to do their own weird type of stand-up comedy. They're going to produce Ted Lasso. And, and those guys are inspirations for people who also have a cultural background that doesn't sound that, you know, they, they belie their, their cultural names, you know, Sudeikis and Galifianakis, you'd, you'd expect two guys from Santorini that are, and they're not. And so they have to, to, to do it on their own. You know, I think Rashida Jones is another one who's, I, mm -hmm. I believe mixed, right? Rashida from mm -hmm. uh, Rec Parks and Recreation, but yeah. he's taking producing into her own hands and, and doing what she can to make the vehicle she wants to. Um, and so th those are inspirations that I think we draw from and, and it, plus it's fun. It's fun to work with your friends. We got asked, it was just a blast. We knew what, that's why we wrote it so well. I think it's because we were writing for our friends. We, we know, we know that, uh, Brett Ernst is going to blow it out of the water with Dominic. We know Vince is going to be Vince. We know Jill and Rob are going to be able to handle the comedy and the drama. You know, I, I, you know, if you didn't even play Jersey guy, my boss, forget about it. That's what I did. We knew what we could do. We knew Aaron Hayes was terrific. Roger mm -hmm. Rignack, who Rignack, who plays Father Mike, I just saw him in the uh, Varsity Blues thing. Uh, it's a, oh, yeah. it's a docudrama. Yeah, Roger's in that as well. But so we knew we just Holly Wartell, Robert Peters, Mister Mister Mrs. Georgeman. We knew what the, everybody brought and how to write for them. And so then and then they improv. You asked that earlier. They were spewing lines and improving, and particularly Joe Reitman and uh, Gary Anthony Williams, who are our Pulp Fiction. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, minions of Mr. Miola, they just riffed that whole uh, scene with regarding two birds and one stone. They just made it up and Rochambeau and they made it up on the fly yeah. and it was fantastic. Well, and you mentioned you're bringing in friends and, and two that I just called out because I big fans of, of them as well from animation, Maurice LaMarche and Tara Strong. I and knew. So I see them on in live action it's yeah. nice to see them right and tara's on uh, hard cases now in toronto she's starring in a crime series there oh. in, in canada and we had worked on projects together mo and i just see each other at the gym but uh, we but we did a, it's on my instagram they both talked about how they really had a some voice actors just want to do voice acting but not tara and mo really had uh, an, an itch to get back on camera and i knew tara would blow it out of the water and mo bless his heart was coming from a, a con in florida was exhausted joined us and we're filming from midnight to five in the morning and he was wonderful He's he was great. wonderful and, and we we knew they would be well, great and, you know let, let's wrap it up a little one last question since you're melding these two very uh popular genres what is it that has both the mob and zombie films in our popular imagination why have they lasted so long i i think there is a sense of for me from my perspective the the mobster is the fantasy world of families. It's like what you get <laughs> by with. <laughs> yeah. You know? Um, so I think that's that's it's actually kind of therapeutic <laughs> to watch in a sense. Um, and then the zombie movies for me, um, I've always felt like zombies exist, you know, already. They just don't maybe look like that, but their insides are like that. Like if you've ever been around somebody and you're just like, oh my God, like that person just took soul, you know? Um, so for me, that's always a frightening thing. It was with zombies. Um, and so I I feel like those two, those two genres mixed together, it was just brilliant because I was like, Oh my God, zombies really exist. And I go, and then we really want to kill our families. Let's put them together. <laughs> yeah. I think along those lines, I think what really hold, why those genres hold it, uh, hold on to us is because they're both reflective of, of the id of something with no ego. They just like, you know, Tony Soprano is Tony Soprano. He doesn't care what happened. He doesn't apologize for anything. And then when you're in a zombie apocalypse, you're not a wor worried about your ego, what you look like, what your appearance, your status, you just are. And so, it's really wonderful to see humans like that in a life or death situation or in a situation where like you did this, I'm going to do that. And I'm not going to feel bad about it because we all <laughs> think that way and wish we could, but the ego and the super ego and morals come into play. Mm. It's less attractive. And that's why the other part is like, wow, this is who we could be in these two situations. So let's put them together. Mm. You know, th that's what I think draws us in. 
and, it, and it's good to be able to to uh, laugh at it, which yes. I do quite a few times in your film. So uh, once again, Witness Infection, it is now available on video on demand and DVD. And uh, so, which is nice to see them both at the same time. So um, uh, people watching this at home, please, you know, check it out. It is a it's very fun. funny film. And, and thank you both for joining me. Thank You're you, welcome. Derek. Thank you, Derek. Nice. Thanks, we gotta go. Carlo needs our help. Let's go. I have to marry Patricia Miola. Hi, honey. And I gotta get her pregnant or we're all going to war. Is this right or did I just wake up in Game of Thrones? Probably a son. If you don't do this, the Miolas, they're gonna keep coming. They're gonna go after you. Jeez. <laughs> don't. God. They're gonna go after your friends. Daggers were my specialty. Of course, I was 14 years old. I was at the Y. And then they're gonna kill me. The small town of Lake Elsinore, California, is suffering what many are calling an apocalyptic end of the world type illness. Is your cousin back on meth? Are you guys seeing this? We are being chased by zombies! You are such a p Such a double standard when you use the P word! Zombies, what a crazy, stupid f***ing <laughs> day! Okay. Down. I don't Down. think I don't think this is gonna help. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button to make sure you don't miss out on any Fanboy Planet videos. And remember, use your powers for good.